Welcome to the last video in this series. I'm going to start by taping down some paper with washi tape and splitting it into six small sections. These are the brushes that I'll be using for the paintings and I've also picked out my colors as well. I'll also be using a spray bottle to mist my palette so that the paint can stay fresh on there as I work. For the first painting, I'm just going to paint in some clouds. So first I'm going to block in the sky, painting just a simple gradation from dark blue to light blue. So I'm just using some some of the basic blending techniques that I explained in the second video. And before I paint the clouds on, I want to make sure this first layer is thoroughly dried. So I'll leave it to dry while I move on to the second painting. I switch to a round brush and mix up some green paint. I'm going to use a very thin diluted wash of this and use this to block in some rough leaf-like shapes. I'm going to paint a forest scene for this one with some sunlight shining through. So you can see I'm working from thin to thick and then I'm going to go in with a stippling technique and just stipple on a bit more of the foliage texture with paint that's a little bit thicker. Now that the first layer has dried in the first painting, I'm going to go back to it and use a dry brush texture to sweep on some clouds. I'm just using pure white paint with a dry brush and I'm applying it in quite thick strokes so I'm getting a nice texture. When I want to build up the opacity of the white, I wait for it to dry and go in with a second layer on top. I concentrate that towards the center of the cloud so that the edges can look a bit more transparent and wispy. And that's the first mini painting done. Now my second painting has also dried so I can go in with another layer of thicker more opaque paint. I'm painting in the tree trunks and the branches using black mixed with some burnt sienna. And then I stipple on a bit more foliage texture on top of that. Once that layer has completely dried, I'm ready to go in with some really thin down yellowish orange paint and paint on the rays of sunlight that are shining through the forest trees. So I'm using a glazing technique to very gently glaze on that light yellow over the top. You have to take a lot of care here to not overwork the paint beneath as you can easily start to reactivate those darker colors with your wet brush. After cleaning up some palette space, I mix up a blue-gray using ultramarine blue with a bit of black and lots of white. And I'm going to paint in a misty mountain scene for this third mini painting. My aim here is to get the bottom of the mountain to bleed as much as possible so I can create that mist effect. I have to be very careful though to let each layer dry before I stack the next mountain on top of it as the paint is very wet on the paper and if I try to go in with another layer it's going to bleed together where I don't want it to. I'm quickly blocking in the first layer for the last three paintings so they can all dry while I work on the other one. I'll be painting a forest scene looking upwards in the fourth one, a galaxy night sky in the fifth one, and a grassy field in the last one. I'm using a dark green to quickly block in where I want the trees to be and then I'm going to switch to a stippling technique so I can create more of the foliage texture. I also mix in more yellow for some of the lighter areas and I just continue to build up that texture on the paper. Then once that layer has dried, I paint in the tree trunks. They get thinner as they converge into the center of the painting. Even though I'm using a size six round brush for this tiny painting, I can still achieve some very thin lines because it comes to a very pointy tip. I quickly paint on a bit of land in this fifth painting and then I have some fun sprinkling on the stars in the sky. Then I paint in a few shooting stars using a size one liner brush. I can get some really thin and precise strokes with this. For the grassy field, I first block in the base color using a very dark green and just bringing it up into a lighter green. Then it's time to make the most of this brush and bring out as much of that wispy texture as I can. I layer from dark to light, gradually building it up towards the front of the painting. The best part is always removing the tape to reveal those clean edges and to see your finished piece. I hope you enjoyed watching this short introduction to gouache series and I hope it also made you want to try out this fun and exciting medium. It can take a little bit of time to get the hang of it but I promise it's so much fun when you do. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.